So I wanted to discuss something that is a little bit more raw, I guess. Um, mainly this idea of like how casual sex is happening in things and social media from kind of a different aspect that I was thinking about today just as I continue to process, I don't know, lots of different things all at the same time. But, um, so I was, I was at work and I was thinking about this idea of consent, right? Just thinking about the term of consent. Um, I feel like the more that I learn about all of these issues with porn and all of these things that we're becoming desensitized to, not even just from the stuff that I'm, I'm working on with different people right now, but also from the people that I'm running into in the world, you know, it's so weird, but it's, it really almost makes it feel like we're consensually raping each other. And I understand how that sounds like a paradox and a contradiction and like that's not possible. But I almost wanted to like mull over this idea out loud in, in a way that might be a little graphic, but I'm hoping maybe everybody can stick with me for the ride just to like, because again, our kids are, some of our kids are experiencing these things. And I think sometimes we have to go like down into the pit a little bit. Um, just to fully understand like what's going on and the potential dangers that are out there and stuff. So, you know, again, lots of people on my channel so far have probably heard my story. I'm not gonna like go over the whole thing all over again, but I was groomed by a pedophile and he did use uh, porn to groom me and normalize me to really graphic things. That started uh, when I was 13 years old. And I think everybody hears that, even I hear that, and we're like, oh my gosh, like, that's so messed up. Like, you you know, the horror of it is so evident, right? But I think the part of my story that, again, it, half of it's the story itself and half of it is like trying to properly verbalize the things so that people can understand the nuances of what happens with people who have been groomed at such a young age is, so, so he groomed me, right? and desensitized me to a lot of these really graphic ways of having sex so that when I met him when I was 16, the things that he did to me for the whole weekend literally did not register with me as rape, period. Like I was driving home and I remember, I have an explicit memory I cr of me crying and I remember not understanding why I was crying, genuinely, because I had, I didn't scream, I didn't fight back, I just froze uh, because I was scared. I was alone in the house with this man who was three states away from me and nobody knew I was down there. So in my head, it wasn't rape. Uh, not only was it not rape because I didn't, you know, I thought rape was when you were screaming and kicking and crying, but also it wasn't rape because I had already seen everything that he did to me in a porn video. So going, just that, that is the starting base of what I was thinking about today. <clears throat> So that happens to me. Everybody who hears the story finds it understandably horrible. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry this thing happened to you. You know, great. But what people don't understand is I went on to continue to have sex like that with people over and over and over again as I got older. So I got older, but the sex stayed exactly the same because that was all I had ever known. That was my first experience and my only experience sexually to go off of. So, you know, whoever I had sex with at 17, whoever I had sex with at 18, whoever I had sex with at 19, I did the same exact types of things with them that my rapist taught me to do, did to me, desensitized me to, this was my only sexual experience to go off of. So I'm not calling any of the men who did things to me rapists. I'm absolutely not in no way whatsoever. But I think what I was examining at work today and this idea that I'm examining now is the idea of what, the only term I can think of is consensual rape, where my only premise, my only foundation for knowing how to approach sex was based off of a predator and a predator's education. And then there are men out in the world, I, I know for a fact because I hear about it all the time, who really want a girl who does anal, who really wants a girl who's kinky in bed, wild, adventurous, things like that. 
and I run into women more and more often who feel comfortable talking to me and you know I have run into women in my life who think that they're so cool because they do anal and, and things like this but anal I think for me comes up the most because men feel not all men but men who want to do something like that seem so entitled to it and girls who do it seem so proud of themselves and every single girl I've ever met who does anal was molested to date I have not met a single girl who does anal and doesn't have sexual trauma and I think a lot of men are getting addicted to porn not understanding if we're going off the statistics that again the sex trafficking industry is the to date $150 billion industry and there's a demand for product right and that's not just in person that's also material and it is a fact it is a fact that 75% of these girls reported having an online presence and it is also a fact that these porn websites do not filter who is uploading material on to their websites and so what I'm, I'm starting to tell girls that I meet is, you know, if you educated yourself, even if you weren't molested, let's just say that you educated yourself on how to be a woman through porn. You educated yourself on how to be a woman sexually through a slave. A girl who was enslaved taught you, who didn't even want to do what she was doing, a girl who was being forced to put that kind of sexual material online taught you how you thought you were supposed to be a cool woman. So you learned from a slave how to exhibit slave-like behavior. And deeper than that is the fact that I, even if, if, so we're not using porn as an example now, we're using girls who've been molested. Men, let's say they're not learning this idea from porn, let's say they're learning it from girls that they're sleeping with. We are setting a standard for other women of what men should expect from us based on something we learned from predators. So it's like when we really start thinking about what we're doing to each other as people, I mean, it is like consensual rape. It is. It's like we're consenting to men raping us over and over and over again. And I think what I find so illogical is the fact that people find it horrific when it happened to me at 16. I know they would have found it absolutely horrific if it happened to me at 13, but where do you think those ideas go? They don't just disappear. And so at 16, I was uncomfortable with it, but I was desensitized, right? Uncomfortable, but desensitized, and therefore consenting. And obligated, more so really. I felt obligated to be a woman. I needed to do these things. And that's what he had taught me, the predator had taught me. And I carried that with me, that mindset, into my future relationships. And men, even if they were not predators, even if they were not porn addicts, let's say they were neither, let's say I introduced that idea to them of, hey, I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z things to you. And they had no idea that I learned that from a predator. Well, now I've carried my predatory learning into this what's supposed to be romantic experience with a man and he has unknowingly allowed it into the experience and now maybe he liked it and he wants it again you know what I mean but all everything about it initiated from either a predator or a slave I guarantee you I have no doubt in my heart that what I'm explaining is absolutely what's going on in the world today. And then people are going out going, oh, I'm supposed to do like anal and all this crazy stuff to be like a cool girl. But really it's from, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't wanna keep rehashing it out because I always do that, but that, that was the first thought. The next thing I started thinking about just, so that's, that's all horrible that we're all starting to consensually rape each other based off of things that have been initiated into societies by predators and slaves, slave girl slaves and male predators, you know? And it's not the, girl, the female slaves fault, they're enslaved by predators, so really just predators. Predators are initiating these narratives into society, right? And then normal people are continuing to carry them out thinking that they're normal when they're not, they originated from predators, that idea, all of them originated from predators, period. Then you look at even things like modeling. So we're gonna carry it a step further. And so, so you have videos like porn and then you have images like advertisements and the things that I did in magazines, fashion, 
but we'll just say advertisements. I didn't even want to be wearing, and I'm not saying I was sitting there like, oh my gosh, get these clothes off of me, I'm gonna die. Like, it's not that. I'm just saying, if you see a girl in a photo, because we, we hear all the time how social media is a lie, right? And we're, we're, it's, we're tired of it, we get it, our brains have heard it a thousand times. I hear that the aspect I hear people talk about a lot is like, oh, the, the girl may look happy in the photo, but really she's sad. Okay, yeah, that's absolutely a layer of this. Here's the other layer. And this is true for paid promotions and things like that. And people might logically realize this, but I want you to like actually think about it. If you are a model or you are an Instagram model, not even just a fashion model, but an Instagram model, um, influencer, whatever you wanna call it, someone is sending you product and telling you to wear it. We're just talking about clothing right now. And for model modeling, I got onto a photo shoot and they put outfits on me. So I'm not comparing that to rape or anything like that, but I'm just saying if you examine the images that you're ingesting to get ideas of how you want to dress, behave, look, exude yourself as a woman, these are not girls who are deciding what they wear. These are not people who are choosing what they wear. They're choosing money. And the money is telling them what to wear. And really, prostitution <laughs> and modeling are not so far apart. Because when you want money and you're desperate for money or you're addicted to having money and you're willing to sell yourself out, sell your body out for money, for profit, things that maybe you normally wouldn't wear, things maybe you normally wouldn't do, exhibiting yourself in a certain kind of way, maybe more sexual than you normally would have. I know I did that as a model. They wanted me to be sexier on set. They wanted me to be naked on set. Well, I'm gonna make money off of that, right? So maybe nor in a normal setting, I wouldn't have gotten naked. In a normal setting, I wouldn't have worn that bikini, but I'm gonna make some money. Prostitutes normally wouldn't do anal, normally wouldn't do half of any of the things probably that they're doing, but there's a profit involved. What I didn't fully conclude in that clip and what I was trying to get at that I'm just like throwing in there really quick is that these are also slaves that you're learning from. You're learning from slaves in porn and you're learning from slaves to money in advertisements. And they are slaves. They are not deciding what they wear. Money is telling them what to wear. And a lot of the powerful people who have the money to tell people what to wear, I'm not saying they're all like really evil, you know, but what are their, what do their moral compasses look like? And then the people with questionable moral compasses are deciding what the clothing slaves wear. And then we're looking at the slaves in photos and saying, oh, I'm gonna dress like that because that's what the photo slave is wearing. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't know. I just felt like I didn't wrap that up fully, so I just wanted to put that in there. And so again, I just am really examining this word consent today with myself and really looking at how sad it is if we really think of it, and it, you know, not further than that, now when I meet people, girls specifically, who talk to me about their, their sex lives and the things that they do as a girl to like please a man, it makes me really sad. And I don't always ask them, I let them tell their story to me. But if I don't know the background of, of who they are as a person, what they came from, and they tell me they're doing things like anal and really kinky shit, I just always wonder in my head if that's all they have ever had to go off of as an initial experience for themselves too. Like just how that was my baseline, only foundation of an experience was rape. All I had to go off of to know how to have sex with other people guys was rape, rape. And some people who are porn addicts, all they have to go off of for their expectations of their sexual experiences is porn, which 75% of, or more, is probably female slaves, trafficked girls. So when we're all walking around feeling super good about ourselves and our really hot sex lives, I 
am just making this video as an encouragement that maybe we should be examining the layers deeper of who we are. And this is not about like, people are gonna do whatever they're gonna do, right? Um, and obviously society at large is what it is, but um, I don't think everyone is always aware of these layers that might be going on. I think this is another reason why casual sex can just lead to so many like, I almost wanna call them mishaps, but they can be darker than that. I mean, if you're having casual, this is why when you're having casual sex with someone, I mean, yeah, it spoils you because someone might be more willing to do something than someone else and you kind of like pick and choose. But I feel like it's also more of an opportunity to have consensual rape with each other because if you are casually having sex with a girl and she's down to do anal, you don't know anything about her, right? You don't know what the foundation of her sexual experiences are. You don't know what her baseline is that she's drawing off of to decide how to have sex with you, how to consensually have sex with you. And so you might be casually for the first time having sex with someone that you know nothing about who's deciding to do anal and deciding to engage in all of this like super crazy sexually explicit behavior because her only other previous experience or her first previous experience, her first experience period was an experience with a predator. And so you're unknowingly and accidentally allowing her to continue to engage in self abuse without her knowing it or you knowing it. And then we go, we emerge out of this experience back into the world thinking that this is normal, teaching ourselves that this is normal. Uh, and yeah, I guess that was pretty much it, but uh, this was just a thought that I wanted to share today.